Okay, so we're looking at, this is video 5.3.3. We're going to look mostly at power reducing formulas that are required for section 5.3. But remember, all of this work that we're doing verifying is truly to get us ready for solving equations, which comes later in the chapter. So our goal here, for example, number six, oh, one more reminder. The checkpoints at the end of the video are not necessarily in your book. One of them happens to be this time, one of them does not. So remember to watch the video entirely through then look at the checkpoints and have the video handy in case you need to re-listen and see some more ideas to help you solve the problems at the end of this video. So my goal for this problem is to write an equivalent expression for cosine to the fourth beta that does not contain powers of trigonometric functions greater than one. So I want anything, it doesn't matter what angle I'm doing, but I can't have a power greater than one. This is really important for solving equations. So I take a look at cosine to the fourth, but I only have a power reducing for cosine squared. So I'm going to start by taking my cosine to the fourth beta and understanding powers, I can separate this into cosine squared times cosine squared beta. That way is the same as cosine to the fourth. Now I can use my formula and replace with cosine of two beta over two. Both of those powers of cosine squared beta get replaced with this. So I have two fractions being multiplied, and of course I'm going to use proper operations in order to do this and simplify it out and see if I've met my goal. So the numerators are going to be the hard part, the denominator is just going to be 4, 2 times 2. The numerator, I'm going to get 1 plus cosine of 2 beta, and foiling it out, plus, let's see, cosine of 2 beta, cosine squared of 2 beta. So it looks like I haven't met my goal yet, because my goal is to have no powers greater than 1. And with this value right here, I have a cosine squared of 2 beta. So I am almost to my goal, but not quite there. So I'm going to simplify the other pieces out and make them all over 4. I also see that those can be combined. So I'm going to rewrite the first part of my expression as 1 fourth. So once again, I'm going to separate them from the denominator, plus 2 cosine 2 beta over 4, and then plus cosine squared of 2 beta over 4. So we want to still allow ourselves to get the cosine squared that we see here out of the scenario, but let's um, just simply rewrite these two pieces and have them handy. So we have 1 fourth plus, I'm going to simplify this, it's cosine 2 beta over 2. But this right here I'm going to replace. So I'm going to replace the numerator once again using my formula. So I'm going to use my formula that I see up there. One thing to be really careful on is this case I have uh, my theta for my formula is actually 2 beta. Okay, So really on the inside I'm going to get 4 beta, because it'll be 2 times 2 beta, based on what's in this formula here. So I'll write that out so you can see it. So 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, which in this case theta is 2 beta. So where I see theta, I put in 2 beta, because that's the actual angle input here. So I'm going to get a value with cosine that has 4 beta, but that's okay. Now i got to finish this all over 2. That's the formula after replacing, but because of this 4 here, this whole thing is over 4. Okay, so now I need to clean things up and then I'll be at my goal because I have no powers greater than 1. So I'm going to get, I'm going to still have my 1 fourth. I'm going to still have my cosine of 2 beta over 2, but I need to clean up this value right here. So I'm going to work off the side to do that so I can clean it up easily. So dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth, so I'm going to change that. Then I'm going to simplify what I see here in this fraction. So 1 plus cosine 4 beta is my numerator over 2. So it looks like I'm going to get the numerator over 8 when I multiply the denominators. 
So my final conclusion here is it's going to be over 8, and it's 1 plus cosine of 4 theta. So I've arrived at my goal. I have an expression for the value of cosine to the fourth theta that involves no powers greater than 1. Here is my answer. You'll see why this is important when we start solving equations. Let's take a look at the next example. This is a verifying an identity. So we have an identity here. Looks rather complicated. You're going to see how the power reducing formulas will help you. So first you have to recognize that the power reducing formulas might be helpful. So the 4x right here, there's a couple of options. You do have a double angle formula that you could use at this point, because 4 can be cut in half. But we also have power reducing, so we could reduce these powers that we see here. And notice that would get me 2x into my equation, and it would all be cosines. So, so I'm going to start with that and see where it takes me. So I'm going to take eight, 1 minus 8 sine squared, sine squared x cosine squared x. And I'm going to start with changing these out by the double, by the power reducing formula. So sine squared x will change to 1 minus cosine, so 2 theta, 2x, two of course, over 2. And cosine squared of x will change to 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. And I still have my minus, my 8 in front, and my 1 minus that quantity. So let's simplify this out, see where we are, and see how close we are to our goal. So 1 minus, now it looks like I'm going to be multiplying three fractions if I change 8 to a fraction. So my denominator would have 1 times 2 times 2, or 4, but that 4 would cancel with my 8 in the numerator to give me 2. Okay? This is a legal thing. I know that we see some sums and products, but we have a product of 8 times the 2 numerators and a product of 1 times 2 times 2 in the denominator. So when we multiply that out, we will get 2 times the quantity 1 minus cosine 2x, times 1 plus cosine 2x. So much simpler than what we had a moment ago. But let's take a look. This is going to give me the difference of two squares right here. Remember, it's like a minus b times a plus b will equal a squared minus b squared. So I'm going to use that special product to help me here. And I'm going to get 1 minus 2 times 1 minus cosine squared of 2x. I'm going to finish this out. I'm going to simplify it out so I can see where I'm at. Let's see. We're going to have 1 minus 2 plus 2 cosine squared 2x. I simply distributed the minus 2 to each term here to allow me to simplify this out. Um, one more step of simplifying before I move on. Let's see. 1 minus 2, I can do that and get negative 1 plus 2 cosine squared 2x. So I once again see that I still have a power remaining here that I can reduce, and that will once again double the angle that's the input right here because of the way the formula works. So if I use the power reducing formula again, I'm going to get 4x. Who knows? I might just get cosine of 4x, and it might completely simplify. So let's give that a shot. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to replace it by the formula and see what I get. So I'm going to get negative 1 plus 2 times. 1 plus cosine 2 times 2x, since theta happens to be 2x, all over 2. So once again, with a little bit of simplifying, I will arrive at my goal. Let's see here. We'll equal negative 1. We'll hang out and wait for me. So it looks like the 2s will cancel. And I'll be left with, plus the quantity, 1 plus cosine 4x. So my cosine 4x is there, and it looks like when I take the parentheses off, my, co my 1s will disappear. And I get what I'm looking for, cosine of 4x. And I've arrived at my goal. So there's so many routes you can take with identities, you just have to try one. So you try reducing the power, and you see if that gets you closer. Knowing the formulas and knowing 
how they change the angle values. For instance, how this one, these formulas double the angle values can be extremely helpful. So because these double the angle, this, this a particular formula worked well for me. I could have worked with the other side and cut the angle in half, and I could have worked backwards and turned it into the left. But since the left looks so much more complicated, we chose the power reducing formula. So you're going to give two examples a shot here. So take a look at the next two examples. Number seven is just like the first example you just saw. So try to reduce it, see what you come up with, try to follow the example. Number eight, so we see a power, we see an angle of 2x. You have lots of options here. Your first option is to change things to sines and cosines. So at the very least, you should start there. And then maybe you meet in the middle. Maybe you use the double angle formula here and the power reducing formula here after you change it to sines and cosines. You're going to have lots of fractions, so you're going to want to simplify them as you go to try to keep things clean. But give it a shot. See where you get. You might surprise yourself and complete these questions. Bring your questions into class. This is due Wednesday. If you bring it in earlier, I'd love to give you some more feedback. This will show up on your assignment about question 30 or so, uh, this power-reducing formula. So good luck and bring in those questions.